You know, when you continuously start getting to your weekly updates the following week, you might be getting behind schedule. But let's go ahead and talk about last week, this week. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update and very happy Memorial Day to you if you're in the States. If you're not in the States, well, very happy Monday to you. So lots of things going on as usual, and they're here to be talked about. Not as much in the entertainment side uh, because I was really just busy doing stuff on this channel and working on stuff in uh, uh, reading. You know, hey, imagine that, a reading channel. I've been reading a lot this week. Speaking of reading, I am still reading Ruin by John Gwynn. I've got about... I mean, these books are huge. Uh, I think I'm at the, like the, I say about three quarters of the way through. Uh, it's one of those things where I was enjoying this series so much that I felt like I was going too fast. And I literally had to force myself to start putting it down because I don't want it to end. And I know that sounds really cliche, but it's very true with this series. I think that this is going to end up easily in my top 10 fantasy series of all time. As far as where it's going to land, that'll take what I call legacy that takes time. Legacy does take time, so we'll see. Very early to talk about these things, but uh, I, I'm very excited to talk a little more about the series. And people have been telling me, hey, we are very interested in non-spoiler reviews. I said, okay, I did that. Why I decided to read, and it kind of turned into a why you should read or whatnot, but they went a little bit more, and I've said that I feel like non-spoiler reviews for book series is just going to be me saying the same thing over and over again, but... I like to give people what they want in this channel. So this later this week, look out. I'm going to be doing um, what I call Faithful in the Fallen Part 1 and Part 2. And Part 1 is going to cover the first two books, Malice and Valor. And then Part 2, later on after I finish, will cover Ruin and Wrath. So I figured that will be the best way to do it. And we'll see how it goes from there. If I feel like it's something that goes over well, non-spoilery, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, look out for that. If you are not reading the series, guys, do it. It's very, very good. I don't know how else to say that to you. As uh, far as Dresden Files, I continue to read that. Obviously, I finished uh, Turncoat. I did the review for Turncoat. Uh, it was one of those things where I felt like Turncoat's a book that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. You know, so many people talk about changes that I feel like they forget to talk about Turncoat. And I thought that Small Favor and Turncoat were both brilliant, brilliant books. And I really helped me get past that funk I felt like I was starting to fall in with White Knight. I think like White Knight just kind of might end up being like my black sheep, honestly, uh, of the series, where it's not a bad book. It just it was just kind of like a transitionary thing where I felt like nothing happened. And that was just one of those things where you go back to it and you look at that review and you're like, you feel that way? Because you talked about it a lot. But it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that probably uh, through time, you'll see more things that uh, that make that book make more sense. Not that it didn't make sense. You know what I mean. Anyways, uh, but again, liking to give people on the channel what they want. Something that I got a lot of requests for is to live read the first chapter of Changes. And so uh, I did this. I went ahead and I did the first chapter. It was uh, might not have been as exciting as people expected because I'm such an immersive reader, guys, that I don't really react. And I know I hate doing reaction videos because I feel like there are people just going like, oh my God, you know, and it's just completely overacting. And uh, I'm such an immersive reader, basically, uh, if I raise an eyebrow, that means something that I reserve my my audible gasps out loud for character deaths and things like that. But uh, spoilers, obviously, for that video. I'm not going to put them in here. But uh, so, so if, watch it if you get a chance. It's really was just me uh, being like, hey, cool, this is the closest I'll ever get to recording an audio book, you know, because I record my, uh, my voiceover. On it. And I know I'm not James Marshall's guys, but you know YouTube is really, really picky with the copyright strikes. So I was like, yeah, I just go ahead and put my own uh, recording over there because I don't want to uh, have the video struck down or the channel struck down by the power of Audible. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to continue and change. I've only read the first chapter. Right? And people, I've already had people ask, like, when's the review coming? And, and, and are you done yet? And, no, I haven't read anything besides that first chapter because I've been working on Ruin and I'm working on some other things I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, yeah, there are some uh, a couple of uh, changes uh, that have been actually made to the schedule. Uh, I talked about clearing off my TBR list. And uh, earlier, one of these weekly updates, I said I was starting to consider starting Lycanius by James Islington as a series I've heard a lot about and I'm very, very interested in. And then I just started looking at my 
read list and I just wrote there was so many series that I have started over the last year and a half that I haven't finished and I said you know what I'm gonna be starting two really big series next year in Malazan and Realm of the Elderlings do I really want all these unfinished series in my ledger so I don't know how you guys are it's kind of one of those things like yeah they'll always be there I can always break up my series that's not a problem I don't have a problem going back to them to me, it's like separating your TV shows. I can watch numerous TV shows at a time, and I can do that over a long period of time. But it's kind of like when you first got a TiVo or a DVR, you know, and you were like, ah, oh, you know, I, I've got like plenty of recording space, but I don't like having all this stuff on here. A clear ledger in the reading list, to me, equals a clear mind, much like it was when I first got my TiVo. Anyways, so yeah, it's a personal thing. You can check that out there. Really, the only thing that's changing is that I'm not going to be reading like Hanius until I finish a few other series, namely The Demon Cycle, The Witcher, uh, continuing on The Cosmere, and um, God, what was it? Uh, Ryra, Ryra, I want the first, the first period of Ryra I want to finish. So those are the kind of things I just kind of want to get those out of the way before I start with the new big series in 2021. Because January, man, it's Malazan and, uh, and the first book in Farseer. So yeah, there we go. Uh, speaking of The Cosmere, since I had to move back when I started Changes, uh, I was like, I wanted to have that reaction be legit, so I wanted to do my review for Turncoat first. So I had to wait until I recorded that review to do that, and so I went ahead and moved up The Alloy of Law, which is the first book in Mistborn Era 2 by Brandon Sanderson. And um, <laughs> you'll kind of also probably make that joke, well, you know, you haven't finished reviewing Era 1 yet. It's coming this week, guys. I am doing the Hero of Ages review this week. I said I, I just... I realized I kind of screwed the pooch on the review format for those. I realized that Sanderson fans aren't the same as Wheel of Time fans. You live and learn on this channel. So uh, I, that, that kind of demotivated me. And also, it's a lot of work trying to remember books that you read three years ago. So uh, lots of note-taking, lots, uh, lots of skimming and trying to refresh the memory. But as far as this, this wasn't planned to be started until June. So like I said, it's kind of flipped it and, uh, and uh, changes. I'm liking it quite a bit, to be honest. Um, basically, it's one of those things, if you just don't consider it a sequel to Mistborn Era 1, you'll probably have a good time. You just, it just got the same magic system in it. But it's different. It's kind of different. You know, it kind of... Remember that really bad movie that came out about a decade ago called Wanted? Had James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie in it where they could like bend the bullets. Kind of makes me think of that, but in a good way because they have the power to push or pull on metal. So they're like moving bullets and stuff like that. Very neat idea. You know, I'm not really crazy about steampunk, but it's Sanderson. It's probably going to be really well done. And this is such a first short book. The first day I read a quarter of it. So I feel like I'll probably finish it. I just got really wrapped up in Ruin the last couple of nights and that's kind of been taking all of my time or working on this something i worked on on this is and this is i'm going to kind of be honest with you guys here this video that i made for wheel of time which is basically my why you should read i called it um, what a uh, 400 days 4.4 million words is basically a non-spoiler why you should read based off of my experience reading wheel of time it's kind of more of a why you should think about reading it because i, I kind of left it open to you it's going to depend on your taste what you like here's what it was like for me and here's why i think you might like it but uh, it wasn't really a hard sales job or anything but i'm gonna be honest that video took a lot out of me so much so that i took like three days off afterwards because i think i spent probably four hours putting that intro together which is why it breaks my heart that one of the top comments on there is hey start the video at 235 if you want to skip the super long intro i'm just like you know, I know that a lot of people don't care about stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people that have been with the channel for a long time, uh, they, they like those segments. And I do spend a lot of time on them. So it, it does suck when you hear that. But again, the, 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 I know the reception is overwhelmingly positive for those. It's just, it's a dagger when, you know, you work on something that long and someone's just like, yeah, if you want to skip this insignificant part, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying. But um, it was a really cool video, I thought. I, I, I was pretty proud of it. Uh, I think that I... Kind of got most of my points across in it, and um, really, I'm looking at it as like the the end of my my first age, if you will, of Wheel of Time coverage on the channel, which is all the books. And the second age is going to begin when we start getting more TV show uh, news, and then I'll filter in stuff like power rankings and my favorite characters and my favorite moments and things like that. But yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a sabbatical on Wheel of Time news uh, for a while because the show has been delayed due to you know the virus that shall not be named, and uh, so. Yeah, I figured that, that coverage of that on the channel here will kind of reduce for now. 
But like I always said, there's not the end of the wheel of time. There's neither endings nor beginnings. It's just an ending. So that is where we were at, guys. But I did kind of also close that off. Same day, I talked with uh, with uh, the, the Dusty Wheel. I don't know if you know what the Dusty Wheel is a channel that is basically a radio talk show about Wheel of Time, where you can like, they take calls and things like that. Really great YouTube channel. And uh, I would really recommend if you are a Wheel of Time fan that you go there and listen because it's just people who love talking about Wheel of Time. It's spoilers, obviously. It's people that have read the whole series and whatnot. But uh, I think you should check it out. And uh, not just because I guessed it. If you want to watch the guest spot, I'll put it up here. It was fun. I had a great time with it. And the thing that I continually say is just it's just a great fandom. You know, I was I was scared when he told me they're going to be taking live calls. I was afraid they're going to have, uh, you know, the the fact checker gotcha kind of people in there. But no, they were just genuinely excited to see what it was like for someone taking their first trip to the Wheel of Time. And that's what I love about that fandom. They were just happy more people were reading it. I wish more fandoms were like that. And honestly, I hope it stays like that if the TV show is a big hit. Because I've seen fandoms get completely ruined once they become popular. So not that it isn't popular, but you know what I mean, to general audiences. And that is pretty much it for, um, I guess, for, for books right now. I don't have a lot of uh, media stuff to talk about this week because, uh, like I said, just doing stuff with the kids, uh, reading, working on these videos, and uh, maybe playing... I, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed on my spare time. Yeah, I, that's not a secret. I did start playing uh, Link's Awakening with my kid. Got it for him for his birthday. He turned eight last week. Uh, about the best you can make out of it, having a Zoom party for kids because of the virus that shall not be named. But uh, I think he, he he made the most of it, you know, and, and we've been playing that together and have, have, having a good time with it. Uh, I only played it when it was on Game Boy, when it was brand new back in the 90s. So uh, I, people are like, is it is it new stuff or is it just a complete, like, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was so long ago that I played that, but it's a very, very cool game. If you have a Nintendo Switch, uh, I would check it out. It's a lot like Oceanhorn if you played that. Uh, Oceanhorn, which obviously was just trying to be Zelda. It's like a Oceanhorn, I think it's kind of like a mix of Zelda and uh, the Wind Waker. The original what, Link's Awakening Zelda, or Link's Awakening and uh, Link to the Past, and then uh, and then Wind Waker, because it's got a lot of boat stuff in it. Anyway, I didn't expect to talk about that game. Someone brought it up in the Discord server, and uh, and I, I thought about it there. Speaking of, guys, if you want to join the Discord, the link is down below. If you like what I do here and you want to hear more, please hit up the Patreon. Uh, again, Patreon is appreciated, but it's obviously not going to change anything on the channel. Like I said, if you want to support the channel, great. That's awesome. If you don't, no worries. Nothing's going to change here. Let's get into the last thing here is I want to talk about a little bit of media news, and that is the news that they are releasing the Snyder Cut of Justice League. And as you can see here, big DC Comics fan. I was so gung-ho about the DC ex, uh, Extended Universe, is that what they call it? The DC Cinematic Universe? I don't remember what they call it, the DCEU, something like that. Anyways, I thought from day one they got the name wrong. I never trusted Warner Brothers execs because they never, ever seemed to have a clue about anything. So, um, yeah, over the last decade, seeing Marvel become like the household name, become like this generation Star Wars, and... I've always thought of people that feel like they've got to choose or are you this or that, or you Star Trek or Star Wars, are you Stallone or Schwarzenegger, are you are you DC or Marvel? I've always said stupid to choose. I mean, there's so much good media. Let's consume it all. You know, why do you have to choose one? This isn't a professional sports team. Uh, I've always appreciated both. Growing up, I was a DC Comics guy because that's what I read. If it wasn't X-Men or Spider-Man, I wasn't reading Marvel. Uh, all I read when I was a kid was Justice League, Batman, Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, tons of Wonder Woman. And all that had been all the way up through my 30s when Jeff Johns really started reviving the DC brand. So uh, I've always been kind of a DC Comics guy. But now for this, I've been saying I'm indifferent on the Snyder Cut. I honestly, I didn't care that much for BBS. I thought that the Ultimate Edition of Batman v Superman was the one that they should have put in the theaters because I didn't think that it was a great movie but it made it a good movie does that make sense uh whereas the theatrical thought the theatrical cut i thought was just like a, a jumbled mess i had it, it was so many times where i was like but this doesn't make sense with this and this and obviously jesse eisenberg was the worst idea for for lex luther ever I thought that was a bad idea so i'm not really big on i'm a big Zack snyder fan i mean there's a lot of the the dc fans they they feel like they've got to go to war for Zack Snyder. I mean, I like I like 300. I love the director's cut of Watchmen. So I mean, I like the guy the guy's movies. I just never thought his touch was right 
for the DC universe. I, I think he tries to deconstruct things too much, make everything too damn dark. And, um, I, oh, I forgot to say Man of Steel. Man of Steel, I think, is a wonderful movie. And I know a lot of people have vitriol towards that movie. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think it's the best Superman movie we've ever had. I don't care if you don't agree. It's obviously fine to disagree here. I know people that are my age are usually like, oh, no, Christopher Reeve. Go back and watch those movies. They're pretty rough. Uh, nostalgia aside, they're pretty rough. I think Man of Steel is a movie that gets finer with age. It has one of the best developed superhero villains I've ever seen in this whole wave of superhero movies that we get now. But back to the task at hand, I was never really for uh, the Snyder Cut. I was like, who cares? You know, it's just going to be three hours of more dark, brooding stuff that, that, that I don't feel like is the representative of the DC Universe. But at this point, when the Justice League movie came out and it was just such dog shit, I was like, all right, well, I got to kind of, I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. So it's kind of like it is now. It's going to be released on HBO Max. And I'm like, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Sure, I'll check it out. I'm still sour they're not putting my boy Green Lantern in there. But, you know, <laughs> what can you do? Who, who knows? Maybe they'll add it in somehow. We'll see. We'll see. But I guess my big hope for this is that it is a big success for this reason. Not that it'll get Zack Snyder to do more DC comic stuff. Is that maybe kind of like Star Wars where I said I feel like the future of Star Wars is on streaming and TV now with Disney+. Plus. I would love to see DC Comics be like HBO's version of that. Where they put a ton of money behind it and they're making cinematic uh, quality television of DC characters. Because guys, these characters are amazing. They have been a just ingrained in our pop, our pop culture for over a hundred years for a reason. They're incredible characters and WB just has no idea what they have. And they've never listened to the people that they should have listened to. So yeah, I got super frustrated following all that while it was going on, but I always kind of knew it was gonna happen. Wonder Woman was a happy accident in my opinion. They got very lucky with that one. Everything else after Man of Steel, I felt like has just been an, just Aquaman was neat for what it was. It wasn't quite what I ever imagined Aquaman to be. Uh, it was a little too much dude bra for me. But I mean, I love Jason Momoa. Don't get me wrong. But it, I, I don't know. It's like I thought it was a fun movie, but it wasn't representative of an Aquaman movie for me. I don't know. I don't know what I want when I Aquaman. I, people make fun of Aquaman so much. Read Jeff Johns' Aquaman. It is awesome. It is so awesome. Um... And then Shazam was good, but I just feel like that was at the point where no one cared anymore. At this point, the the it, when they made a good DC movie, no one even cared. So I feel like they just damaged the brand to a point to where it's going to take some time to recover. And if they do that by just shoving out a bunch of new stupid movies that no one asked for, like Birds of Prey, which is not representative of the comic at all, and uh, what else? New Gods, don't care, could care less. If you did Dark Side and Justice League, sure. Maybe I would have been more interested in that. I, I don't know. I feel like that there's just it's just such a rich universe that they could before. And for God's sakes, quit hiding behind the abomination that was the Green Lantern movie ten years ago. Remember they made a really bad Hulk movie with Ang Lee. Five years later, they made Edward Norton's Hulk, and now they have a cinematic universe. Quit being scared of your properties. Mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. It's okay. We can fix these things. So uh, I'll definitely check out the Snyder Cut when it hits on HBO Max. Uh, I'll be getting that service just to uh watch a few other things i can't think of what it was right now. what was our big exclusive i think it was something stephen king related i can't even remember anyhow so guys are you interested in this narrative what are you doing this week are you are you watching anything are you playing anything listening to anything reading anything drop in the comments and let me know and have yourselves a great great week